Welcome to the Dog Nerd Show, where we geek out over our best friends. I'm Megan. And I'm Michael, and this is a show about all things dog. Hey, everybody. Today, we have one of my favorite dog breeds, the Saluki. Yeah, so one of the things about the Saluki that I didn't know, and I bet a lot of you didn't know either, is it's one of the most ancient breeds believed by man. Known to man. Known to man. You say they didn't know that, but we've got some very intelligent dog nerdy uh, <laughs> listeners and viewers. So y'all feel free to comment whether you knew that or not. But yeah, this breed, I just think is so beautiful and so graceful. And I've always loved seeing them and meeting them and talking to someone who has had them for so long was really cool. Um, Caroline has had Salukis for I think she said 47 years wow a really long time so a great person to talk about the breed um it, we joked at my last job that if I were a dog you know just by looks this would be the breed be the Saluki yeah you know I, I kind of have a tall, long nose lean tall lean yeah with hair <laughs> <laughs> Now, some of them, so you'll see in the, if you're watching and if you're listening podcast, folks, you got to tune in just to see these beautiful dogs. These, um, these have the, uh, feathered coat. So they have the longer fur on the ears and on the tail and a little bit on the legs. There is a smooth version that looks more like a smooth greyhound. So anyway, we're not going to jibber jabber too long. This is a great interview all about this mystical, magical, regal dog, the Saluki. We are here with Caroline Coyle and her Salukis. Tell us their names. Okay, this is Party, party. because she's a party colored Saluki. Okay. And she lives life like a party. <laughs> this is Lava. Uh, he's a grizzle Saluki. Okay. And this is Flash, who is a cream Saluki. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> so they come in lots of different colors. Um, so are more colors than this? More colors. There's black and tan. There's red. There's black fringed red. There's fawn. There's spots in every color. Oh, wow. There's uh, solid black, but they're not very common. Okay. Um, so all sorts of, and the grizzle comes in every shade. Oh, wow. So um, they are beautiful. Dogs. Thank you. And I was telling you <laughs> that I was once told that if I had a dog that I resembled, it was this dog. And I was like, that's a compliment. I, I think they are graceful. They're beautiful. You were telling me their personalities are supposed to be um, aloof and dignified. Okay. Well, at least in public. <laughs> At home, they're goofballs, just like any other dog. But they can, you know, once in a while, they pretend to be dignified and they pretend to be, you know, get their feelings hurt if they don't get the right kind of treat. Aww. He was in the group ring the other day. The treats did not suit him. And so he was in a snit and pouted the whole way through. Oh, no. <laughs> Which is not what you want when they're in the group ring. No, right? no, it is not. <laughs> So these are sight hounds? Yes, um, they, they were bred to run down jackrabbits and gazelles out in the deserts of the Middle East. Wow. So they're very fast. They, um, not as fast as a greyhound, but they run much longer than a greyhound, okay. like a couple, several miles. And they also, they don't get hurt when they run, like greyhounds have a more tendency to. I always say greyhounds, think of them as your dragster, mm -hmm. you know, super fast short distance, manicured roadway. This is your off-road buggy, ah. you know, your dune buggy, big feet, um, just built to, to withstand jumps, any sort of terrain, oh. rough terrain, and to do it fast and, and gracefully at the same time. Yeah. Maybe a dune buggy isn't graceful. Yeah. Well, <laughs> That's what some people, is. dune buggies are graceful. <laughs> right. Um, the, is, then this is the full grown size. Yes, um, this is full grown. The the, the females can be much smaller than this. For males, it's a big range, 23 to 28 inches. Okay. So these two boys are probably around 27. Okay. Um, and she is a big girl, so uh, okay. she's not too far under. <laughs> <laughs> um, do they shed? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> like okay. any other dog, they shed. This is, this is actually, they come in two varieties. This is called the feathered variety. Mm -hmm. And you can see it has long hair on the ears the tail mm -hmm. and actually in between the toes yeah 
and a little bit of fringe elsewhere. There's another variety that's smooth and they're like a greyhound, totally smooth all over. One gene uh, makes the difference, but these are genetically long-haired dogs. So yeah, they shed like any long-haired yeah, dog yeah. would shed. It's just, you know, not as much of it. Yeah, but, so. but they don't have an undercoat. They, no, there's they actually do? a little bit of an undercoat okay. there. So you see this fuzz. We yeah. would take this fuzz no, out for it. the show ring, yep. but that is undercoat. Okay. So yeah. um, not so a, you know. So that's gonna make them shed Yeah, too. they're not gonna shed like an Akita or, yeah, or, or a an, Husky. Right, <laughs> but I'm not gonna say that you're not gonna be sweeping. Yes, yes. <laughs> now, how are they, um, are they a good dog for a first-time dog owner? Uh, you know, most people would say no, and I'm, I don't think they're as difficult as most people make them out to be. I've had them for uh, 47 years. I was a teenager when I got my first one, and he was a great dog. You know, I took him to the beach every day, he ran off leash. But their problems are, you know, sometimes those walks on the beach would end up being hours because, you know, one-hour walk three hour recover and try to catch him. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, and if they see something to chase, they're going to chase it. There's no training them not to chase a deer or a rabbit or something like that. So, so you have to be careful where you let them off sure. leash. Yeah, I was um, going to say, but, would you even recommend that? If you're, if what you want, if your goal in life is to take your dog out and hiking off lead, I would say not the best yeah. breed, really. Yeah, we're um, going to go off that hiking trail and go find Exactly. But, but although I did take mine hiking, but again, they were really long hikes, yeah. and half of it was getting them back. Yeah. <laughs> um, they're really good in the house. They sleep, I always say, about 23 out of, hours out of the day. Love the Conserving sofa. that energy for the <laughs> That's run. right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Um, they got, you know, the extra hour of running away. Yeah. They can chill on the sofa yes. very easily. They're not dog aggressive. They're not people aggressive. Mm -hmm. Now, you said they're aloof. Are they going to be... Um... So they're not going to climb... They're not going <laughs> to climb in your lap or all over you. <laughs> Party's party. like, well, actually, I Mom. Uh, you know how people say they can't go to the bathroom by themselves because their dogs yeah. follow them? And they're... No, they do not follow you to the bathroom. Yeah. They're like... Oh, oh, you're back? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When, is it dinner time? Yeah. So they're very, uh, they're independent. They're free thinkers. Um, and uh, here's one thing that you could get that some people have a problem with. Um, most of them aren't big eaters. These happen to be big eaters, but, um, and they can be very thin. Your neighbors can complain that you don't feed your dog. Oh my goodness. <laughs> People give me a hard time about my weight and I'm like, this is just how I'm built. Right, it's like you have to carry a bowl of food around just so there's like, no, look, see, here's food, he's not eating it. It's his own desire because they're a little bit persnickety. Mm, okay. So, um, so that's, you know, if you are very self-conscious about people thinking you're a dog abuser, Yeah. Sometimes it can be a problem. <laughs> but they're built this way. They're built for speed. Exactly. Yeah. Hey, Flash, why don't you come see us? So <laughs> they, um, do they have any health issues that we should be aware of? I'd like any big dog, um, they can have heart issues like dilated cardiomyopathy, but it's actually a pretty healthy breed. Um, our biggest killer is probably, you know, heart failure in old age, mm -hmm. cancer in old age. Mm -hmm. They don't have hip dysplasia. Right. Um, they don't, even though they should be subject to like bloat and gastric torsion, mm -hmm. big dog, deep chest. Mm -hmm. It's very rare. Wow. So um, that's awesome. So yeah. generally, a pretty healthy breed. That's right. No, no eye problems. Um, just really uh, very healthy. So. That's awesome. Um, so I'm, I'm guessing they're not big barkers either. No, they're not. They're very quiet. Um, they have a deep bark when they do bark, but I'm, I'm way, they can howl if you yeah. have more than one. Yeah. They love to set up a, you know, a chorus, and sometimes we think they sound like they're being murdered because <laughs> they're not really melodic howlers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't have the food. Um, yeah. Anything else that we should... Lama? we need to know about the breed? I, you know, I think they get a bad rap as being really hard to train. Okay. And I think they're actually pretty easy to train, but people don't expect a lot of them, and so they don't get a lot from them. Okay. Um, 
Let me see. Of course, they're big tricks. I didn't bring a smart one with me. <laughs> Our very, hey, Flash, can you sit? Uh, oh, look, she can jump up. Isn't that great? <laughs> Like, but well, let me point something out. This is not my dog. Okay. He doesn't live with me, and I just picked him up at this show to take home. I actually own half of him. He's from okay. Lithuania. Oh, wow. Um, but look how well he is getting along with these dogs. He doesn't really know. Yeah. And two males here, they're not buddies. Yeah. But they couldn't care less about, you know, being ugly to each mm-hmm. other, and that you couldn't get in a lot of breeds. Yeah. So, and this is Flash. He just won the breed today. So he's oh, Flash, he's conserving his energy yes. for the group now, yes. we'll say. I think he's he is a little ticked that he's having to share the treats. The, oh, <laughs> and the spotlight, maybe. Yeah, but again, they're eating the treats out of the same hand. Yeah. You know, nobody's fighting or anything like yeah. that. And uh, they just all tend to get along together. So, so, so are they stubborn with being hard to train, or is it just that they're... They get bored easily. Okay. Um, I don't have anything. They don't respond well to force training. They like to think it's their own idea. So if you can trick them into thinking they have really outsmarted you. Gotcha. And they're like, ha, I'm sitting and she didn't want me to. Yeah. You got it. Yeah. <laughs> Independent, right? Yeah. If you want to train heel, you train it as keep away. Ah, <laughs> see, you got to trick them. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. And they're like, oh, no, I'll stick right to your side. Yeah. You're not getting away from me. Uh, you got to be a smart, a smart human, right? Yeah. And keep it fun. They really do like, like any dog, they like to have fun. Yeah. And, yeah. and you keep it, they love to, uh, as a reward, they like to chase a lure on a pole, not necessarily just... A dog treat. Yeah. So you keep yeah. it fun, keep it active, and uh, you know they're no, they're not in the in the wild in their evolution of breeding. A dog that was bred to run down game is going to be an utter failure if he's always looking at at um, there's a bark at uh, his owner. You know, oh, what should I do? Right. Should I turn left? Should I turn right? No, yeah. just do, you do figure it out. Yeah, you know what to do. Right. do if it. you're a retriever or a herding dog, you have to, you know, it's like, what do you want me to do? You yes. have to think on your own somewhat, but you also have to take that direction. And that's the main difference. Anyone finding a dog has to know what they were bred to do because it's really hard to train against those genes. Amen to that. <laughs> well, they are just beautiful and I, it's a breed I have loved for a long well, time good. and well, so I'm see you so, need one. I know. I <laughs> Just think how look how good you'll look and they can be like, <laughs> with one. <laughs> That's I'm, right. I'm envisioning it right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, people used to say I looked like mine but that was a f- few pounds ago. <laughs> I still think you do. I still so, think you do. Well, thank you. It's definitely I mean I watch this video and I just look at those beautiful, graceful dogs and I just, I want one. You want one? Yeah. We don't need one, but there's, you guys will learn which breeds I I really would like. And we interviewed another one at this same event. So this was at the Lawrenceville Kennel Club's dog show. Shout out to Judy and her team for having us there. Wonderful, wonderful event. Great, nice. great people. Awesome welcoming, people, yeah. nice. Um, you know, I know we've got a lot of rescue folks out there and there's a, there's a lot of people that, you know, they don't like breeders because of all the dogs that are in the shelters. Our position is people are always going to want to get a dog of a certain breed. So we promote responsible breeders who are not going, who are going to make every effort to keep their dogs from ever getting in a shelter. Um, they're very responsible and th- that's who we talk yeah. to. Uh, just wonderful people. So thank you so much uh, to the Lawrenceville Kennel Club for having us out at your show. Um, I had to wear a baseball cap for this day because I got sunburn the fir- or windburn. We're not sure. It was very windy and cool, Yeah. but the sun was shining. Um, we do want to note about, um, we know Caroline, no problem. Well, she she's had her Salukis off leash, and as she said, yeah, you know, a one hour hike could turn into a two hour hike because you're half the time calling your dog back to you. But in our research, what did we find? Well, we found that they're probably not best to have off leash, and that you pr- you're going to need a fenced in area, whether it's a yard or a dog park you visit or something of that nature, because 
uh, I think the quote was, "These dogs are too fast and too smart. So if they get if they get off leash and get away from you, uh, you're not going to catch them, and uh, unless they're very well trained, because and these even, dogs are hunting dogs. These yeah. are sight sight hound hunting dogs, and it's just bred into them for thousands of years to go after prey. So and even if they are well trained, like she said." They're independent hunters, so they're not like a herding dog or a retrieving dog that is looking to you for advice. They're like, I see that thing, and I'm going to chase that thing until I get that thing. Right, <laughs> and they usually get it because they're usually faster than everything else yeah. out there. So, yeah, yeah, they're a really unique dog. I don't know much. I didn't know much about them. Uh, so this was entertaining and educational for me to research them and to listen to Caroline. Uh, beautiful dogs, absolutely beautiful. They, what's impressive when you see them up close and in person is just how big and padded their their paws are. It's very interesting. And the fact that the fur grows in between the 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 toes, um, which I I thought it was cool that she said. Think of them like a dune buggy, you yeah. know, the all-terrain off-road sort of dog. Yeah, so your Greyhound's kind of like your Ferrari uh, that goes really, really fast on the pavement. And these are like uh, a Ferrari that has four-wheel drive and can just keep going and going and going and going. Like a Land Rover Ferrari Cross or something? Yeah. yeah. I think there already is one of those. I think probably. Ferrari makes one. <laughs> so it's Probably. Like, probably. Um, yeah, I thought it was cool that... Um, even though the Greyhound is faster in the straightaway, that these guys have more endurance and yeah. that we found, um, according to Wikipedia, the Guinness Book of Records listed a Saluki as being the fastest dog capable of reaching a speed of 42.8 miles per hour. That's 68.8 kilometers per hour. <laughs> That is so, really, really fast. So this is why if you're going to get one, you're going to need to put it on a leash because I guarantee you none of you can run 42 miles an hour. If you can, you're probably... Well, I, well, you saw him bolt or uh, yeah, someone of that nature. You're, you're, yeah, you've got to be an athlete that we've never heard of before. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Superman. Anyway. So super cool dog, um, wonderful event. And uh, if you have a Saluki or have had a Saluki, let us know, share your stories. We love hearing from you guys. Um, and let's do our commenter of the week or by week or whatever we're called. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, and while, while we're getting ready for that, guys, please, uh, give us a thumbs up if you like this content. It really helps us a lot and it gets us, um, you know, more, more views, which allows us to, to grow our channel, which is very important. And another thing that would really help us is if you could subscribe, and if you subscribe, you can hit the notification bell and it'll let you know when we have these videos come out. Okay, so today's comment is coming from an email. So this is from a podcast listener. And let's see what Nicole had to say. I attended the Texas Pet Sitters Conference in February as well, and I enjoyed the talk, the vet's talk on Chagas. I enjoyed your podcast episode and all of the others as well regarding Chagas. It was a refresher on what the vet talked about at the conference. Megan and Michael both asked very good questions. I look forward to hearing an episode with the vet regarding cancer. So thank you so much, Nicole, for that feedback. We really appreciate it. Um, if you guys haven't listened to our Chagas episode, if you're just here for the breed episode, we have a wonderful episode where we interview a veterinarian expert on Chagas disease, which is a very important disease called the heartworm of the 21st century. So be sure to check that out. We'll link it here. And uh, anything else, Mike? No, just uh, subscribe, and thanks for tuning in. We really do appreciate you. Megan, can you tell people where they can find us? Yes, you can find us everywhere online at Dog Nerd Show, dognerdshow at gmail.com to drop us a line. And if you're looking for some dog nerdy gear, visit etsy.com slash hound and thistle. That is where I make my stuff. And, oh, I forgot to mention, you guys, look, I dressed up today for this episode. I even wore something that had kind of a... Middle Eastern flair because that's where the Saluki originated from. Yeah, the Fertile ba Basin. Fertile Basin. Oh, no, no. You got it wrong. The Fertile Crescent. Oh. <laughs> fertile Crescent. Yes. All right. 
Well, thanks again, folks. And until next time, bye. Bye.